All right, we're here with a couple of vocabulary words and example, first example from 9.2 on exponential decay. A couple of words we need to be familiar with are, what do you know, exponential decay, depreciation, and half-life. What exponential decay is, is not unlike exponential growth, it's a situation described by an exponential function. So we know what an exponential function is, that f of x equals a times b to the x in which the growth factor is between 0 and 1, and in which f of x decreases as x increases. So decay means go away, so the value of the function is going down as the value of x goes up. So as time goes on, something is, is going away. And this happens because the growth factor is between 0 and 1. And we'll see an instance of this here coming up. What depreciation is, is the decrease in value over time of manufactured goods or of, of anything. It's the decrease in value. So how much is that going down? We'll see an example of that here momentarily. And then half-life is the amount of time required for a quantity in an exponential decay situation to decay to half its original value. So half-life is how long does it take for something to be cut in half? the value of that to be cut in half. We'll see an example of that here, forthcoming as well. So these are the words we need to be familiar with here. So here's our first example, and suppose we have a new SUV and that it costs 36,025 bucks, and it depreciates 12% each year. So what that means is that the price or the value is going down by 12% each year from its current value. So it's at 36,000 when we start, and it's going down 12% each year. We're going to write an equation that gives the SUV's value when it is two years old. This is an exponential function or an exponential model or an exponential situation because the value is decreasing by a percentage. It's not the same amount every year. It's a certain percentage of whatever the value is. So we're going to need an exponential function form to model this. That function is going to look like this f of t is equal to 36,025 because this is the initial value, and we're going to multiply that value by 0.88 to the t power. Why 0.88? Because if the, if the car's value stays the same, then we would just multiply 36,025 by 1 every single year, and then it would change because if you multiply anything by 1, it stays exactly the same. What's happening is that we're losing 12% of its value. That means we have to multiply this by 8.88 because it's maintaining 88% of its value every year. So this 0.88 essentially comes from 1 minus 0 0.12. And then we're going to multiply that to or take that to the t power because every single year it is being multiplied by 0.88. It's maintaining 88% of its value every single year. So this equation models the value of the SUV after t years. You want to find out how much it costs after one year, it's going to be 0.88 to the first power. Multiply that by 36,000, which would be 36,025 times 0.88. So we can plug in any value for t we want based on years to find out the value of the car after those t years. And we'll do that with four years. Let's say we want to find out how, how, how much it costs after or the value of it after four years. We're going to take four. We'll get into our function. So 0.88 to the fourth power, because we'll essentially be multiplying the value of the car by 0.88 four times. 0.88 to the fourth power is 0 0.60. I am rounding this. It's a much longer decimal than that, but I'm just rounding it to 0.6. Zero, and we'll get a, a rough estimate here. 0. 0.6 times 36,025 is approximately 21,615. It's actually a little bit more than what it is because I rounded this 0. 0.88 to the fourth power up, 0. 0.6. So this is actually a little bit more than what it's worth after four years based on the fact that it's decreasing by 12% each year.